Good morning or good afternoon or whatever it is wherever you are. Let's talk about German cars. Now if you look at the three cars on your on your screen right now, they seem like pretty good cars, don't they? They seem like luxury, uh, well-built cars. And whenever you do think of Mercedes, BMW or Audi, that's what you think of. You think of a, a well-built luxury car. Now, BMW, Mercedes and Audi are all German companies. And today what we're going to briefly talk about is why is Germany so good at making cars and what is different in Germany to the rest of the world. So let's get a bit of context behind this. Just less than a century ago, Germany had just been defeated in World War I. Uh, they were forced to pay reparations to the other countries because they were blamed for starting World War I. And this led to a lot of debt and hyperinflation. As a result, money basically became worthless. People played around with cash in the streets. Uh, you'd have to take a suitcase full of cash just to buy your daily needs. And this caused a lot of unhappiness which led to social and political stability. This created the atmosphere that made Hitler so popular because he was promising that he would lead Germany out of this economic mess. So essentially Germany was in very big trouble. So let's jump back to today. The German car industry at the moment is the largest uh, industry in Germany. Uh, it's turned over over 361 billion euros in 2013 alone. That's one fifth of the whole industry revenue. And Germany for a while has been the largest car producer in Europe. Uh, it manufactures over 30% of all the cars that are produced in the EU. And the, the global spread of, of German cars can be seen in how one in every five cars in the world uh, is a, from a German brand. So one might say from this that so from this you can see obviously the German car industry is very good at what it does but you might say also but look at Britain's car industry for example we're really good at making cars but there's quite a misconception in this actually in that Britain is not quite the automotive power that it once was and what people think of it as now. Um, let's go through some of the notably British brands so to speak. Uh, and just uncover something behind them. So the first thing you'd probably think about when you thought about a British car is Aston Martin. Uh, you know, James Bond and all that. Uh, in fact, Aston Martin is owned by a foreign bank consortium. It's not actually purely British. Bentley, that's a that's another one as well. You'd think that, oh, okay, that, that's a really good British car company. Nope, it's owned by Volkswagen, a German car company, of course. Rolls-Royce, what about that? Owned by BMW, German car company. Jaguar, you know, you see all those uh, kind of patriotic British ads with Jaguar in it. But no, they're owned by an Indian company, Tata Motors. That's the same with Land Rover. Mini, come on, that's got to be British, surely, hasn't it? Nope, owned by BMW. Vauxhall, not the most exciting of brands, but at least this is going to be British, isn't it? Nope, it's American General Motors. And in fact, there's not a single purely British mass market car manufacturer in existence. So if we look at that example of Britain, uh, we can see that what Germany has done is actually quite an achievement. Uh, companies like Mercedes, Audi, BMW, and even Porsche, uh, they're still uh, locally owned companies. Uh, so how is it that Germany has been able to thrive so much in the automotive industry? Uh, there are three key factors to this. Obviously there are gonna be more, but we're gonna talk about three. The first major factor is innovation itself. Secondly, there's manufacturing. And thirdly, we're going to talk about the education system in Germany. So innovation, what Germany does really well is it avoids brain drain. Now brain drain is what happens in many countries in the world. Uh, let's take an example of Nigeria. Nigeria, it's a not very, it's a relatively well developed country, but in comparison to countries like the USA or the UK, it's not really that attractive a prospect for, for young people who are perhaps, you know, university educated. As a result, they will move to other countries from Nigeria. And Nigeria will be experiencing brain drain in that its young talents, its uh, skilled academics, for example, will be moving to other countries to seek better work and life there. Germany is really good in this in that it pays good wages. Uh, quality of living in Germany is good. It's, a, it's an advanced country. And in general, the fact that German brands are some, among some of the best in the world of uh, cars, uh, that keeps a lot of German homegrown talent in the country and in fact what German companies are also good at is actually attracting talent from abroad so for example they run foreign programs to try and find the best engineers the best designers and they'll pay for them to come over for internships or jobs and this is really good for Germany because that means they get the best talent from not just their own country but from all around the world so this collection of talent in Germany ensures that uh, there's constant innovation and new designs coming out to make sure that German cars 
are among the best in the world. Let's talk about the manufacturing practices as well. Now, interestingly in Germany and actually a lot of uh, European countries, the workers' relationship with the bosses is much more reciprocal. It's a two-way relationship where uh, both sides listen to each other and there's not necessarily such a large uh, inferiority complex uh, like you see in perhaps uh, American or even British factories. As workers are given more chance to participate in the production line. So for example, in every executive committee, in every factory, uh, there's a selection of worker representatives. So this means that decisions made in the factory are not purely based on uh, numbers and statistics and costs and benefits. The workers have a voice, uh, they have some, they have representation, and also that the factory line can run more smoothly because at the end of the day, uh, it is the workers who are uh, working on the factory line and they are likely to know more about the whole process than the management themselves. And generally the workers are treated well. In 2011 auto workers in Germany were on average paid roughly twice as much as those in the US and this comes into a kind of formula almost that fair pay plus good working conditions equals loyal workers and loyalty really is quite an important aspect of the German manufacturing process. Unlike uh, in the US and UK for example where workers in factories they turn they change jobs quite often uh, in germany there's not this kind of phenomenon of job hopping a factory worker will stay at his factory uh, for a very long time and this is good because it ensures that he knows the processes inside out and he gets skilled in one uh, in that job he doesn't have to keep retraining this also means that the factories can invest more uh, in long-term training for their workers making a more efficient and productive factory line. So on to education. Uh, it's a very different system to what we have here in the UK. Uh, it's not a one-size-fits-all system. In the UK, whether you're good at studies or academ academia or not, uh, you have to study in school until 16, then you can decide what to do from there. In Germany, there's an earlier specialization, and actually vocational courses are appreciated and respected far more in Germany than they are here. Unfortunately here there's quite a misconception about vocational courses that those who do and follow vocational courses are just generally not as skilled or intelligent as those who continue on with further education whereas in fact vocational courses ensure that talent is allocated where it is best suited so not everyone's that good at studies not everyone is going to be suited to go do degrees in universities some people are better at practical activities and vocational courses allow those people with better practical skills to be used in a way that will benefit everyone. This attitude in the UK to vocational courses has meant that a lot of people are put off by vocational courses because they don't want to be seen as inferior to those who continue to study. Um, and this often leads to quite a waste of, of resources and waste of talent, in fact. The vocational course in Germany ensures that there's no shortage of skilled workers for manufacturers such as BMW to choose from, and this means that the production lines are, are and this means that the production lines are smooth, quick, and efficient. And just a bit more detail on the education system: everyone must study for at least nine years. Uh, it's nine years for the vocational students and ten for the academic students who hope to go to university. The formal vocational training begins at the age of fifteen. However, depending on which school you go on, uh, vocationally orientated education can be uh, taught earlier on, uh, perhaps sometimes even from the age of 10. This German system ensures that people are using their time wisely, learning skills that are helpful in their future careers. And uh, those who are better at practical skills uh, are nurtured from an early age rather than simply forced through the same education system as everyone else. So those are the three contributors, in my opinion at least, to why Germany makes such good cars. It's certainly interesting how this combination of keeping innovation in the country, uh, attracting talent from abroad, the manufacturing process, the whole involvement of the workers in, in executive decision making, and then also at the root of all of this, the education system that uh, is quite different to the one that I experienced myself. It's very interesting how they all combine to produce a very efficient, very productive automotive industry for Germany. And it would be fascinating to see whether Britain and other countries could also adopt such similar uh, economic and social practices. But yeah, hopefully that's informed you just a little bit about what makes German uh, cars different, why, what makes the automotive industry in Germany so efficient. There's quite a similar system in Japan actually, but uh, I thought I'd focus on Germany for this one. So, thank you for watching and join me next time when I'll be talking about digital piracy and whether it actually matters. Good night.